I've always been a deeply curious person, talking with anyone who would listen and soaking in as much information as possible. So it's no surprise my love for storytelling led me to a career in journalism. But after nearly a decade working in newsrooms across the West Coast, I realized I wanted to start asking questions you probably wouldn't see on your local news. So I left my job as a morning TV reporter and started The Spiritual Journalist. This isn't just a YouTube channel, podcast, website, or social media page. This is a live conversation where you get to ask questions too, because I'm not the expert. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. My goal is to connect you with people who have profound experiences and inspirational stories to share. And we'll definitely mix a little astrology in too. So if you're like me, you have this insatiable curiosity and you love deep conversations too, well, this is the place for you. Together each week, we'll explore everything from crystals and tarot to mental health and the environment. There are no wrong questions here. My ultimate goal is for you to come away from each episode with a new perspective and an expanded consciousness. This is a channel for the collective. This is a community for the curious. This is The Spiritual Journalist. Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Spiritual Journalist. We definitely have a different setup than usual today because we're both in the same room, for starters. It's nighttime, and we have our first male guest say hello hello this is my partner julian and today we're talking all about nfts what are they how do you get involved in them what does nft even stand for and why you might want to know about them so if you've been curious about nfts if you have been a little confused about nfts you're in the right place we're going to break it down to the basics so Bring your questions, bring your curiosity. If you've ever had a question about NFTs, uh, we will try our best to answer it. We're not cryptocurrency or NFT experts. This is not financial advice. However, <laughs> most important thing to say, right there. <laughs> However, Julian has been deep into the world of NFTs for the past almost two years now, like everyone else in the pandemic, right? And he has, he's dabbled in a lot of different kinds of NFTs too. So we're gonna show you different NFTs. We're gonna show you how to get involved. But first we start all of these shows with a brief look at our guest's birth chart. And uh, this is one that I am very familiar with. And so, oh, there's your birth information. We'll just <laughs> select that right up. Um, so, what did it say? It, said it just says the date and time no, that some people don't like to have. My pin number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, I want to show everybody your chart because actually looking at Julian's chart helped me come to terms with nfts a little bit more easily and his passion for sports the community the love of technology um, you will see that he has a capricorn sun he also has a stellium in capricorn lots of action in capricorn and he also has an aquarius rising and an aquarius moon also his venus is in aquarius which is funny because you know aquarius rules technology it rules community and uh, leaning into technology, leaning into NFTs, very on brand, according to your birth chart. <laughs> I like how you're just nodding. Um, also though, look at his 11th house, traditionally ruled by Aquarius. He has, I think, four or five planets, the computer's a little farther than normal, in his 11th house. So also why, being part of the community feels probably very like nurturing or very comfortable for you. For sure. I didn't necessarily know that until, you know, after NFTs and stuff, but you know, I played team sports as a kid and that was, I was always very into that for sure. And then I've always stayed uh, in a community with pro sports mm -hmm. and you've seen me in my element. You say it's a lot different when we go to sporting events. And, uh, <laughs> That's an understatement. Yeah. We went to a Suns uh, Western Conference Finals playoff game last year, but you said you understood I got the community it. and everything. Like once you were there, you said it was like Suns Disneyland. Well, I am not someone who grew up watching sports, so 
being with you has introduced me to a whole other world. And trust me, there's a tie in between NFTs and sports. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but it's funny because like the shirt he's wearing, like this is an NFT. <laughs> ballers, baby. Let's go. Ballers. Where my ballers at? We'll show you what that's all about. <laughs> also, uh, you know, it's funny because Julian is someone who's really like quiet and kind of like reserved. I think when you first get to know him, being an Aquarius rising, he's kind of like off in his own little world sometimes, also an Aquarius man. That's not a bad thing. We've already we've already talked about these things. Um but it's funny because all of his planets in his 11th house, like his sun in his 11th house, his Mercury in his 11th house in Capricorn, I understood. I was like, oh, this is why you want to like wear your community, like show up in the Phoenix Sun shirt, in the NFT baller shirt. Like I was, I was wearing a sun scarf as I walked in here. And I told her to take it off. She said no. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe the later of the show, end of the show, I'll throw it on in a while. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, if you look at his chart, it's just like jam-packed through his 11th house, tons of Aquarius energy, and uh, that's why I think it makes him the perfect person to talk about NFTs. And every time I think of the 11th house now, I think of there's this guy on YouTube, if you've ever heard of Dogecoin, he's like the Dogecoin poster child. I don't even know this guy's name. He, I think I he's from like I Wisconsin. Can't remember his name, but he has the iPad and he's always like this. If you've ever seen a guy talking about Doge and saying like, do the moon. Yeah, he always says, it, uh, things like that. That's... He always says, it's a community. It's a community. And every time I think of the alone house now, I'm always just like thinking of that guy's voice. Like it's a community. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> NMTs are a great way to get involved in the digital community. And I think that's, how we're going to see them evolve over you know the next couple of years it's going to be almost like a ticket into a digital community it already is in a lot of ways so we're gonna explain all of this because you're probably watching and thinking like what in the world <laughs> still are nfts don't worry by the end of this you'll have a better grasp on it but before we take down your birth chart is there anything else you want the people to know about you and what you've learned about yourself through astrology um you know, I can, I've been described as pretty cold before. And <laughs> oh, you mean all the Capricorn Aquarius energy? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it kind of adds up. Like, I kind of, for a while, thought, oh, I just must be a dickhead. But it turns out I'm just a Capricorn. So there you go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, that's enough <laughs> astrology. The people came here for the NFTs, and we're already getting questions. Love seeing you both together. A rare treat. Uh, both of us on the couch in the studio together that never happens let's see i only have one nft that i got from staking ada for meld will it ever be worth anything see this to me is <laughs> gibberish are we are we doing questions okay now well or? we'll take questions later i just wanted to see what the people are saying yes i know i know court his chart is like your chart i mean you guys are like so twins. Let's go, baby. big cap energy yes and court says here for the scarf show mm. her the scarf show her the scarf she wants it we gotta show it to her okay Let's see i knew this was a good idea okay we're just we're showing it we're not wearing it okay now let's actually talk about okay no that's it. We saw it. Are you really going to wear it? No. Okay, I'm thank just you. trying to pretend thank to you. tie like a tie. <laughs> and that was no. <laughs> okay, so let's actually start really getting into what are NFTs. And I think it was great that we showed how much of a sports lover you are, because that's really how you got into the world of NFTs. Explain to people like when you first discovered what an NFT was or maybe got interested in buying one. So it was probably, it was around like Christmas 2020, I think it was, it was the middle of the pandemic. And I actually started collecting uh, sports cards. That was what got me into it. I there was a huge surge of sports cards during the pandemic. Like all these people that were at home found their old sports cards. Yeah. Um, cards boomed uh, basically about the time NFTs were booming, but I, I think cards probably brought in a lot of people like me. And I was I was mentioning cards to uh, one of my friends, and then they brought up, "Oh, are you, are you going to get a, a moment now?" And I'm like, "A moment? What what is that?" So what it was was uh, NBA Top Shot digital collectibles 
moments. And so I started messing around, like looking at it. I bought a couple of Suns ones and they, they what they did was basically it was a series that they didn't, um, the number of NFTs, they capped the number. And the day they announced that, every moment, every Top Shot moment from series one just exploded. And this was series two. So I missed series one. Okay, slow down, slow down. Where I'm, I'm a little bit lost. Okay, so what is a moment, right? Explain to people what is a moment because this is an NFT. Basically, he transitioned from physical sports cards to almost a digital form of sports cards that are NFTs. They're called Top Shot. The NBA produces them, Here we go. right? LBJ. LeBron James, for those of you who don't know who LBJ is. <laughs> it's out of a pack uh, just recently. This isn't one of my newest ones. But what it is, as opposed to a card, which is a still image, this is an actual moment from an actual game. And it gives you, you know, it gives you the, the description of what it is, like when it came from. And it's also, uh, there are serial numbers attached to it. So this one is out of 60K. So this is not a valuable one. This is LeBron James makes it valuable. I think this one probably is around 20 bucks or something like that. What's like a, a limited amount that they've released of one, uh, like opposed to 60,000? Out of 99. 99, those are, okay. Those are like legendary and it may be, that's what they're called. This is this is a common out of 60K, and then they have the legendary, which are out of 99 or less than that. So there's lots of different tiers. There's lots of different kinds, but essentially you are buying like a digital sports card, but instead of it just being a card, it's a little video. It's a moment. That's literally what it's called, a moment. And you are owning a moment of a basketball game. Since Top Shot came out, they're working on, they've released NFL uh, versions of NFTs, they're working on baseball, UFC is coming out. So sports really kind of introduced a lot of people, I think, to the world of NFTs during the pandemic with things like Top Shot. This LeBron legendary is out of 34. This was, this star indicates that it was a reward. So the lowest ask for this one, I don't know if you guys can see, is 53,000. Wait, do you own this? No, no, I wish. Oh, that what a buzzkill. No, this was just, <laughs> I was just going, you know, because most people, if you aren't into Top Shot, the way you've probably heard about it is like people are selling these NFTs of LeBron for 200,000 or, you know, something like these outrageous numbers. They're going like as much as houses and stuff like that. So I was just showing, you know, some of the, these are the legendary so ones. So I know that you can't see on the screen right now, but like all of the ones that he's pulling up, see, one, look at this one. this one's is... worth a quarter of a million dollars. One's worth $65,000. One's worth $96,000. So I mean. And, and these are what they're listed at. Like right. it's, it's worth as much, some, so as much willing, willing to pay. But yes, like for these, this is his debut. So that's why it's listed so high, 225000 So you can see there is money to be made, right? These are worth a lot of money and it's really cool. We'll get more into kind of towards the end of this episode where we think NFTs are going and kind of the metaverse. We'll, we'll give our little two cents projection wise, like why we have decided to invest in these kinds of things. Uh, but it's pretty cool that instead of just owning a card representing a player, you are literally owning the moment right like you if you watch an amazing game you can own this crazy dunk or like rebound or whatever I yeah don't know if you like the game down, the game i brought up earlier that we went to it was suns clippers and there was a bridges mikhail bridges dunk that booker gave value towards the end lost my mind with jay Lou and matt Reed, of you guys um but anyways i had that moment it's great it's not like super valuable but i can you know it's just i saw this with my own eyes and here it is and uh, and a team form, which is cool. I love how this has just become a super like casual chat with us now. <laughs> That's what you get when you bring your partner on your show. Uh, Jenny asked, does that mean no one else can own a moment if you do, or does demand drive the price up? So that's a good question to clarify. It, it, uh, it depends on how many are released and they cap how many are released. So that first one he showed was out of 60,000. There are 60,000 moments. They each have a serial number. Generally, the lower the serial number, the more valuable a moment is. But then there are some that are out of like 99. So with almost every NFT, it's like they release a certain amount. And yes, that does drive the demand up because 
they're never going to release more than that. That's kind of the, the promise the NFT creator is making. Like, it's like with sports cards. They're like, okay, we're only going to release 100,000 of these Derek Jeter sports cards. That was like a total random reference. But, but, but the thing is, they don't, they don't do that with sports cards. And that's kind of why, like, sports cards getting back dying. to that. Yeah, kind of getting back to the beginning of what got me into it. Like, sports cards, it's really complicated in terms of grading and all kinds of stuff. And you get cards. And the companies don't tell you how many there are of the certain, the type of card. Right. So with NFTs, with Top Shot, it lets you know exactly how many there are. Like, I have a Devin Booker common debut. It's one of my like more prized moments, and it's out of uh, 1,100 or something like that. So that's on the lower level. That is Series 1. And in terms of collectibles, Series 1 versions of like Pokemon that if you've ever heard about like really crazy Pokemon prices, it would have been a Series 1 like Charizard or Fox or something like that. So that is why Series 1 Top Shot. Uh, so there's are. different series. There's different classifications. Whatever NFT... You're like you don't have to be into sports to be in to NFTs, and we'll show you different examples of NFTs for different interests. But each NFT creator has kind of its own system of tracking, of value, of what is more of like a prized NFT than maybe a more common NFT, right? Yeah. And so, it, rather than like diving into like specifically what it means on Top Shot, it's more I think it's more beneficial for you to like decide what your excited about and then learn that specific kind and like top shot or nfl all day these dapper products dappers the company behind top shot and the nfl version of it um they are different than the other nfts like say crypto punks or uh board eight because those are out of ten thousand. but those are one of ones those nfts those are one of ones those are like the these, these are not one of these are yeah. one of 1100 and that that may seem weird like oh why would i want that but in terms of cards it's less than how much cards are going out and if you paid attention to any part of the card boom it's wild like the best cards go for millions and millions of dollars for sure and so like a lot of people when they think of the nfts you know they're like oh yeah you're owning a jpeg like those nfts are generally the ones that are like the most popular are generally one out of one, but there are only like 10,000 total released in each one's individual. So like I said, you know, we'll, we'll show you different examples as we go through this. We'll kind of explain how each one works, but you're better off deciding what you're interested in and then learning about that specific thing. And let's hold, hold on. Before you do that, we, we got to explain packs too in Top Shop. Okay, well, so we have an exciting thing. Uh, we're going to open a pack. We're going to open a pack, but let me like, Preface this. Okay. okay. Some of those LeBrons I showed you that were extremely valuable, they were in packs. That was, you didn't know when you initially mm. got it, it that you were getting the LeBron. You bought an NBA Top Shot pack. Like a card pack. Yeah. Like a sports card pack. Yeah. And then when you open it, you digitally open it. It's like a wrapper comes off and then it shows you what uh, moments you have in there. So when the people got a, like series ones in the, during the pandemic, before it boomed, People could just go into the market and buy multiple packs because it wasn't a big deal. Even like when I first heard about it, I'm like, I can't even like wrap my head around what I'm actually, you know, seeing. But then when you think about cards, they're pieces of cardboard. It's like if you really like comparing like what is this digital NFT, you know, I don't I can't own this, I can't touch this, but like I can touch a card. It's like, yeah, you can touch cardboard, but in terms of value. It's valuable because of how many there are and what condition it's in. And yeah. Jenny said, I love that. Like Wonka's golden ticket. Like, yes, there is an element of chance in most NFTs. Also, since we're all in the same room, you guys get some cameos from our dogs during this live stream. So can we open a Top Shot pack? Can we like show? He saved the Top Shot pack just for you guys so he can show you how this works. You can be part of the experience. And like I said, if you're not into sports, keep watching because we'll show you some other kinds of NFTs. You know, if you're like, who is this LeBron James guy? <laughs> okay, so are you going to show? Yeah. Okay. So this was a, this is relatively new. This is a $50 pack. Um, but Top Shot has done something different where there could be potentially a legendary in here, one of the more valuable ones. It could be a bunch of 60K, which aren't very valuable, but you know, there's a chance. Older editions of packs, 
you knew it was either common moments or legendary. This one, they mixed them up. So you don't know what you're going to get. It could be anything. Yeah, it could be anything. It could so, okay. be anything. Okay, so you're opening it. It looks like a little... Oh. What? Okay, the marketplace is down at the moment, so I cannot actually open this. I was a little scared because it doesn't let you to this point, but now I see this exclamation point is not going to. Okay, well. But we can try again uh, later towards the end of the show. We'll try again towards the end of the show. This is part and... of, you know, the Top Shop stream game. You, there, the marketplace is in um, maintenance right now because it's actually dapper. There's been a lot going on today. Uh, they have a UFC version of NFTs. And today, the marketplace went live. For that kind. Yes, the, the UFC marketplace. And that marketplace is in maintenance as well, because I have actually a few of those UFC NFTs, and I want to sell those as soon as I can. Okay, so the moral of the story here is that this is all through technology. It, <laughs> and maybe later. And with the way technology has been going for us today, this is literally no surprise. But we'll try again later, and if it doesn't work later, you just have to follow Julian and he'll open the pack for you on his Instagram, right? We got to get your followers up. So we're teasing. That is, that's fair. I need to get those numbers, <laughs> up, those rookie numbers. <laughs> okay. So we kind of gave you an intro into how Julian got into NFTs. But for those of you who are still like, mm, do I actually understand what an NFT is? I want to give you a little breakdown of how NFTs came to be. So first of all, NFT, why is it called NFT? Well, it stands for non-fungible token. And you can literally Google the definition for fungible. But essentially, a non-fungible token is, uh, you know, a, a token, a piece of art, some sort of digital asset that cannot be replicated. Non-fungible means it cannot be replicated. And NFTs were all born out of kind of the Bitcoin boom. So 2008, we all know what happened in 2008, the economy crashed and Bitcoin was born out of that crash. If you're curious about kind of the history of Bitcoin and the history of cryptocurrency, go back and watch the episode I did with Natalie Grinnell all about Bitcoin. She gives a really thorough explanation of how cryptocurrency came to be. It's really helpful. Uh, but that's when the blockchain was created. So Okay, another little uh, definition moment. How would you describe the blockchain? <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of like, I look at it more like with smart contracts, which actually is the blockchain, but okay. So I'm going to go to CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club. Those are the two most popular, valuable NFTs built on an Ethereum smart contract. So you need Ethereum to buy a board ape or um, a crypto book. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to use that. You can use, you can convert your actual fiat money into Ethereum, but you have to have Ethereum. And then there's also a lot of other complicated things with MetaMask. MetaMask is a wallet. So you have to move the Ethereum to your MetaMask wallet or buy Ethereum in your MetaMask wallet. And then on sites like OpenSea, that is where um, crypto punks board ape are hosted. You can use your Ethereum to and buy it. And what the smart contract does is it confirms the like ledger of the NFT. It's kind of like a receipt. Like this is the, this, you know, whatever NFT it is was bought by Olivia this day. So the blockchain essentially like Bitcoin kind of created the blockchain or cryptocurrency. You're probably familiar with blockchain from cryptocurrency. Like every, I don't know, coin, Bitcoin is on the blockchain. It's like a, an electronic bank ledger, essentially. So anytime someone purchases one Bitcoin, digitally, that information is stored, like he said, it's an electronic ledger. So, you know, people saying like, can't you just download the JPEG and you own the same NFT? Like, no, you don't, because that NFT has a digital receipt, a digital ledger behind it showing who actually owns it. That's why they're non-fungible. They can't be duplicated. So anyone can like, you know, you can download this baller to your phone and be like, I own this and you can fool people if you want to, but. You're not gonna fool the community. You're not gonna fool Twitter. You could fool your friends at home, I guess. Yeah, like you can try to be cool, but you don't actually own it because it's not on the blockchain. So 
NFTs are all built on a blockchain. And we talked about Ethereum. We talked about Dapper Labs. We'll explain like different cryptocurrencies kind of go with different NFTs because NFTs are built on blockchains that are tied to those different cryptocurrencies. So like he mentioned the Ethereum blockchain. Cardano, does Cardano have its own blockchain? Yeah. yeah. So Ethereum has its own blockchain. Cardano has its own blockchain. Bitcoin has its own blockchain. Uh, and then there are other kind of like up and coming forms of blockchain, forms of cryptocurrency, but each cryptocurrency essentially has its own blockchain. Topshot uses Flow, which is different than those. And Flow is cool because you can actually just use American fiat without gas fees. And it's a lot easier. That's what, if you've ever bought an NBA uh, Topshot moment compared to trying to buy uh, an, an NFT on OpenSea, they're night and day, it's like speaking a different language. But Topshot, it was easy. Like when I first went in, it's like you could just use your credit card. You could just use your own money. Yeah. So we'll also, uh, once we kind of explain different NFTs, show you how you can buy one, like where you can buy one on these different, I don't know, platforms or, or uh, it's almost like a portal, you know, like OpenSea is like a portal to get you into is it the Ethereum blockchain on OpenSea or can you get into multiple blockchains? I believe OpenSea is only Ethereum. Okay. And we'll talk about gas fees too because I'm curious about that. But you said something that I still don't understand. What is fiat? Because I've heard a lot of people talk about that, but I don't know what it is. It's just normal money. Oh, like normal. American dollars. Why is it called fiat? I don't know the exact definition. I was just honestly trying to sound cool. And, uh, <laughs> I know. I've, I've heard a lot of people like in the crypto world talk about fiat. It's just the like official way of like because fiat how would you are? how would you describe it if you weren't saying fiat? Just dollars, just American dollars. Yeah. Okay, so it's the cool way of saying dollars. Got it. Okay, so now let's walk through a couple of different kinds of NFTs that you you've touched on some of these, but we're going to show you what some of them are. So I'm going to start with the uh the original like nft that these are like the most valuable now or some of the most valuable right they've been surpassed by four eight um i can i can but these are kind of like the original ones right yeah these were the original ones that mm -hmm. when the boom first happened these well honestly when the boom first happened these were probably hanging around like twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. but now it's like we're getting into like hundreds of thousands, millions for CryptoPunks. Because CryptoPunks are kind of the original NFTs. And it's funny because what do you think the first CryptoPunks went for? Do you know? They were free. They were free. And now they're going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And are they out of 10,000? Like most? Okay, so 10,000 were released or there was a promise of 10,000. I don't know if they're slowly releasing 10,000 over time or, or whatever. They all kind of do it differently. Um, but you can see I pulled up a celeb feature here. Heidi Klum has a CryptoPunk. So these higher end or like original NFTs are starting to gain celebrity clout. And, uh, you know, Heidi Klum, do you think my new CryptoPunk looks like me? Uh, Bored Apes are another one that a lot of celebrities have hopped onto because at this point, being able to own a CryptoPunk or being able to own a Bored Ape NFT is like a status symbol, right? It, that is kind of what NFTs, part of what NFTs will become. Like it's a flex, right? A hundred percent. I think it's the number one thing about NFTs that people are not realizing. They're only like focusing on the digital JPEG. Someone could steal this. This doesn't make any sense, but like, you look at a watch. This is like a nice flexible watch. It's an eye watch, but I'm not wearing it to flex. But think about Rolexes or something like that. Like you don't need a Rolex to tell time, but if you're wearing a Rolex, someone's like, damn. It this. means something. Yeah. It means that you're a baller. Not to be confused with ballers, the NFTs, which we'll show you in a second, but it means that you it's status, it's wealth, right? And uh it's interesting on that note because a few months ago, we watched a conversation that Mark Zuckerberg had with Gary V, all about the metaverse, all about NFTs. Highly recommend watching it if you're into NFTs or the metaverse. And they talked about, Gary V said that he knew like years ago when people were playing, is it Farmville? Is that what that's called? That game on Facebook, Farmville. 
and they were willing to use their actual money to buy assets in the game to buy more i've never played farmville but you know buy things in the game so they could like level up he was like oh people are willing to invest their money only for its social currency it's social currency to be like oh i'm on this level of farmville yeah it's people cuddles. love leaderboards it's pretty wild that's part of the reason why i I believe Top Shot uh, at first, and I still believe in it. Um, one of my friends, Josh, he used to play, uh, it was the MLB, uh, MLB The Show, and there were basically digital cards that you could buy. You were given packs for playing, I don't know exactly how it works, but you, you would get digital cards. They're basically like the first moments, just not on like the blockchain. And- That just came for free with the game. Yes, but you could, there was a marketplace and you could buy them, but you can't, but you can't take your money out. Like there was no, so like literally hearing about that. This was okay. how many years ago? Like four years Is, ago? He was telling me about this just over the years. Like he played that and then on FIFA, they do that as well. And people are pouring in money um, to have this status, but you can't even get your money out, which is wild. So I guess you could, you could sell, but all you could do is just buy more or something like that. And then also Fortnite skins. That's yes. something that like, I've seen, you know, funny, uh, funny tweets about like people being unwilling to or complaining about Top Shop, but then they have like thousands of dollars in Fortnite skins and stuff like that. Right, so. because this is the world we live in. People are forming communities. They are communicating with each other online. So rather than, you know, okay, this is going to like age me, but when we were in high school, like we'd spend the money on the Abercrombie and Fitch and the Hollister clothes, right? Because that was cool. And that showed our classmates or our peers that like we were cool, we were with it. So now it's like kids growing up playing Fortnite. Yeah, they're gonna like ask their parents. I mean, I've heard parents say like, oh my gosh, my kid's spending so much money in Fortnite. Like I had to cut them off, you know? We're not in that world, but it's a great example of how people are using NFTs or digital assets, maybe not exactly NFTs, but forms of digital assets for yeah. social currency. And, and what you're saying just about longevity of M NFTs, just think about the kids. The kids are gonna get money and that's all they care about is video games and the digital flexes and they're gonna go to college and, or not even go to college and make lots of money because they bought followers They'll or, just be or something like that. So you just, you know the boomers unfortunately we love the booms but like they're gonna go by the wayside and then the, the you know the younger goblins what is the current uh, gen is, is gen x or? i think it's even younger than gen x i don't know what that generation is but actually over the holidays we were at my mom's house and uh her like nephew essentially is probably like 11 or 12 and he started talking about the discord so if you heard about the discord I'm not in the Discord. Discord. Oh, Just... not the Discord. See, I'm clearly not <laughs> into it. I'm not cool enough for it. But he was talking about how he had, like, a, is it a Discord chat? A Discord His group? School, it's a group. His school had one, and it's just really genius because, okay, like, Facebook, when it first started off, you had to have uh, the college email to, yeah. like, to start. And then also, yeah. like, with MySpace and everything, Adults aren't on that page and they're not worried about that. So kids have this own secret place on the internet to kind of do whatever they want. But then uh, older people kind of ruined it and, you know, got onto Facebook and turned it into what it is now. So they've moved to different platforms. In Discord, you have to be invited to be in the Discord so it can be this secret... It's like a secret private chat. Yeah, it's like a private chat that has moderators that must be just like kids at the school and then they can just kind of... Like he's the kid we were talking to said he just likes to like make memes and he puts memes in the Discord and it just it reminded me honestly of like uh, what was the MySpace version where you could send it out to everybody you know what I'm talking about like where you could post something but all your followers could see it so it kind of like invented oh, the law almost for Facebook right it's basically a new form of social media for it sounds like kids once this kid said his name is Alex my mom is watching right now once Alex said uh you know i'm on discord with my friends i had a moment of like oh and, and so did he like 
the future generation is already using this technology, like this technology that we're, at least I'm trying to like adapt to and understand, they are already using it. So- And the connection between NFTs and Discord is lots of companies, that's where they're putting out their information first too. And Discord, there can be private Discords as well. So you can like, for the spiritual journalists, I've talked to Olivia, maybe there's like a paywall or something that you, there's some information you are only releasing on the Discord and you have to pay and then you can approve them to be So honest. are there always paywalls for Discord or no? no. Um, but that is an option. Yeah. And like you, so Ballers is an NFT that he's invested in and there's like a specific um, Discord just for Ballers owners and you have to be a Ballers owner, be verified on the blockchain, well, okay. right? You to don't... Be in it. There are private chats that Ballers holders can access. I believe okay. everybody can access the Ballers Discord because there are people that maybe are like, oh, I'm interested in buying a Baller, you know, like people in this chat or something like that. And then you can go see the Discord, but you can't see everything in the Discord. So you have to be verified. So that's a part of like, you know, the right click savers they say about NFTs, like you can't get in these Discord, like they'll know me. And it's like, okay, you don't know this at all. Also, I would just like to point out that Jenny said Tumblr, that was my jam. And the Discord, not the Discord, just Discord. Discord does feel a little bit like Tumblr in a way, like, or like Reddit. I don't even like, know what Tumblr is. What is Tumblr? Well, we're not going to go into that. <laughs> but Reddit kind of, you know, how it's just like a feed of like constant comments or something, right? But it's more, li it's like if Reddit and AIM had a baby. Sure. D uh, which is very much dating us now. <laughs> another thing about Discord is it is an extremely toxic place a lot of times, mainly for when it comes to NFTs. It is the where you go to sound off and there are no repercussions about anything. It's basically like, say I opened that Top Shop pack if it would have opened and I got really bad moments. I didn't get anything cool. And people just go on there like, oh, Top Shot sucks. It's dead, blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's what people just con there's not positive things for the most part it's all negative it's it's, it's uh, so but you don't have to be involved in discord to be an nft owner right no but it is the place to get the first get info yeah like top shot does these things called challenges which is like getting a lot more in the weeds it's kind of based on what moments you own and if you own the right moments they'll give you a free moment just for having it which is utility and That's, we're going to go into utility more too because that's kind of like the whole like draw of NFTs. Like you, if you're thinking about investing in an NFT, finding one that has utility is something we would recommend just from our experience. It's key and it wasn't like CryptoPunks have no utility. That's right. the thing. Like yeah. this is it. You own this and its status. That's basically it as of right now. Yeah, but some people say Board Ape Yacht Club kind of invented utility because they started giving if you're if you hold a board eight they started off i believe with they gave a board eight kennel club so that was basically one eat on its own they just gave you an nft and then they also gave out serum which is pretty wild which made mutant board apes i don't know if you've oh, ever seen the mutant okay ones. well can you show do you have board apes you can show people yeah okay because board apes we showed you crypto punks and those are like the originals right then board apes came out i don't know the timeline of all this but you might have seen some celebrities now talking about board apes because honestly board apes for me when he told me okay at the beginning of 2021 a board ape was going for what 200 bucks or something like that they minted at 0.08 eth so that's the thing it's always tied to a cryptocurrency yeah, so or at least for these. At the time, I believe it was about two hundred bucks and And ETH was lower then too, keep in mind. So point was it point oh eight or point eight? Point oh eight. Point oh eight ETH. So if you know ETH was like two grand at that point, it would be about like what? Two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You're right. so, that's what so, it was like one fifty to two hundred. So yeah, just trying to explain that it's not just this is how much it was going for in fiat. <laughs> you want to know what the floor price for? I want to know what the floor price for board apes are today. A hundred ETH. One hundred. One hundred ETH. For, for a year for later. Not even the rarest. Like we haven't even gone into that. Like it's more valuable based on rarity. That's kind of how they separate. There's, there's ten thousand of them, but certain ones have laser eyes, and the laser eye ones are more valuable. I know that seems ridiculous, but they are kind of cool. So. uh 
And, and what's the price of ETH about right now? I haven't been keeping track. I haven't looked. I think it's around 3000 So it, the price of Ethereum went up and the value of one board ape went up. So not only are you seeing an appreciation of the asset just because it's gained cloud, it's gained momentum, but you're also seeing it because the cryptocurrency has also gone up. So there's multiple factors involved. Um, but do you have some board apes to show the people? Yeah. Willow wants to see. Here we okay. go. So you mm -hmm. probably recognize these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just light. Let me see if I can bring some okay, up on my computer too. Gotta, yeah. yeah, so these are these bad boys. You know, if you want to own one of these for what is uh, 100 times 3,000? Don't do that to me. I'm not a math person. 100 times 3,000 would be like, what, 300,000? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so... So these are these bad boys, like, price. So this is the cheapest one, this, uh, this bad boy right here. Okay. I'm trying to pull up some on um, Twitter, too. I, is this a real one? Can I show the people this one? It's not. Boys, T, you have, this is a whole nother thing. There are so many copycats of Board Ape. Like, they, they kind of look at it, but look at the name of the Twitter account, Board Ape Europe, Europe Club. Club. Okay, so that's the other thing, is you want to be very certain of what you're investing in and do your research. I like to say that this is the Wild West of the metaverse. We're in the wild west of NFTs right now. So everyone's trying to get a piece of the gold. Everyone is, you know, there were some some con artists in the wild west. There were people trying to take advantage oh, of it's other con, people. It's con city. She's underplaying what it is. You okay. literally, you know, you have to be extremely careful when it comes to NFTs. You, like nothing bad has happened to me, thank goodness. But there are situations where you're kind of just trusting developers when you don't necessarily know who they are like the developers of board eight just got um revealed the other day like i think uh new york post did an article or something about them but before that so you would have invested you know 150 bucks 0.08 eth into this but you didn't really know who the developers were but that paid off to the maximum you know it's it's if you have a board ape you're it's life-changing set for life type of money so the board ape yacht club is a really great example of utility and community because board apes are the nfts and this is just their twitter feed uh board apes twitter feed right now so you can see they're you know they're constantly coming out with different variations they saw like a mutant one people there's like fan art for them it's a whole thing right um, but the Yacht Club, when you told me about that, I was like, oh, like this is next level. This is bougie. So what is it? What is Board Ape Yacht Club? Yacht Club, yeah. Um, it is a, it's been described as a digital country club. Like what you're saying about Yacht Club, it provides, like we were talking about utility. So one thing with Board Ape, like there was in New York City in November, there was NFT NYC. And Board Ape held a party on an actual yacht in New York City on the water, I guess, in the Hudson. And you had to be a holder of Board Ape to get into this party. It's, mm -hmm. You know, it's exclusive. You you need this you need this PFP on Twitter, and you need to be able to verify. I don't know exactly the. I'm sure somehow through Discord, if you if you were planning on going, you had to RSVP or something like that. You had to prove that you were a holder. And by the way, for those of you who are new to this world, PFP stands for profile picture. I did not know that at first. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and so that's just some of their utility. It's it's interesting. Like you see, like they gave out sweaters like 40 yacht club sweaters and then you just started it was maybe just because i follow twitter enough but like courtside you see these like couples sitting just wearing the black sweaters with the the ape skull on it and mm -hmm. you know if you know you know and anyone who knows like like I, I we went to a king's game and i saw someone wearing a board ape sweater i was like oh board that, that person's rich <laughs> so it's like you know it used to be like wow that person's wearing a I'm dating myself so much in this podcast, so like Juicy Couture or Gucci or Prada. You're in your Prada, 20s. Prada I, can't even hear, I, can't I know, hear but like screen. saying Juicy Couture is pretty, uh, you know, you guys know. Um, but now, speaking of the early 2000s, didn't Paris Hilton just get a board ape? 
I think I now she's coming out with her own NFTs. Just look her up on Twitter, Paris. Oh, did, is that her? That would uh, probably be where she profile has picture. It. Okay, I'll look that up. Also interesting, Paris Hilton has what's it called, Twitter Blue, where she has like so Twitter is kind of jumping on the NFT game and see how it's not a perfectly round profile picture. The more octagon profile picture is representative that you have. It is a verified NFT. profile picture. NFT. So it is to, you know, because the right click saver joke has just gone too far. And basically people started to try to, it's like how you confirm you have it, how, you know, because people can just, you know, I could save one of these board apes and be like, hey, you know, I could have said, well, this is my board ape, look that. but yeah. you wouldn't know. But so Here. what Twitter Twitter has is what she was talking about. It's verified and then you have the octagon around it. But then there's also the thing about the NFT community is they're a little fickle. They, they're kind of, I feel like maybe it, it will latch on or maybe they, Twitter just has to make it free because it's not free right now. And it just kind of rubs people the wrong way. And they're like, I own this. Why do I have to prove it? By you have to pay, I think, $3 a month or something to be part of Twitter Blue. But when you click on Paris Hilton's profile picture, you look at the bottom, it says, you know, the name of the NFT, the number, the serial number of the NFT, what collection it's part of, and then it says verify collection by OpenSea. And OpenSea is the platform where you can go buy NFTs, which we will show you. We'll show you how to get involved. Uh, but I just thought that's interesting that uh, Twitter is already looking for a way to create utility through Twitter by allowing you to showcase your NFTs and showcase that they're actually verified. Um, but yeah, Paris Hilton, I believe, has a board ape. So board apes have become kind of this like status symbol of NFTs, and they vary in, uh, in price because the different like features they have make them more or less rare. So this is another NFT project that we are actually invested in. And when you, you see what they look like, you'll understand why I hopped on board with this so quickly. Because, uh, you know, I think it's important if you're going to get into NFTs that you are somewhat interested in whatever project or you, you at least kind of like whatever project that you're getting into. I think that's an important part of it. So Junkyard Dogs, Julian first showed me these and I was like, okay, I can get on board with this because they are little like, they kind of look like Boston Terriers, our dogs, but they're like little mutts and they kind of have weird googly eyes, speaking of our dogs jumping up on the couch. Um, and they totally look like our dogs, honestly. And so I was like, this is a project I can get behind because I'm obsessed with our dogs. I believe other people will think these are kind of cool and funny and cute, but these ones have a ton of variety. They have different outfits on, they have different colors and almost like breeds of the dogs, different markings on the dogs. Some of them have an eye patch or an eye out. Some of them have a ball in their mouth. And uh, depending on what features the NFT has, that can kind of tell you how rare it is or how valuable it is. So um, we have a couple of them and talk to them about like the utility that or, or the value i guess i should say of holding on to an nft and what you learned through junkyard dogs and just kind of like holding on to these okay that's a good example this was my first one that was that i bought on the ethereum blockchain that was not an nba top shot because so i i watched board Ape go down and people get it like I had an opportunity just like anybody else, but I also just heard a lot of, you know, crypto maxis or crypto punk maxis that were like, this is just ripping off what crypto punks are, it'll never work, blah, blah, blah. But what they failed to realize was that there are so many people that do not have crypto punks. Crypto punks, there's not many holders, and there's just this whole community of people that were ready for their own thing. And that's what Board Ape became. It became like the second coming, almost like the Facebook kind of to MySpace potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. but then we sort of missed the boat on yeah. board. It's yeah, sorry, I forgot, I forgot where I was going. they so, quickly became too expensive for us to invest in. Yeah, definitely. But after just see, going through that, it's like, okay, I have to just, I don't know, I think it's a good idea to not like diversify uh, NFT portfolio and go with something else. So 
I've been waiting for a dog related, you know. Uh, and I showed them how closely. NFT, <laughs> Lego school, Junkyard Lego. dogs resemble our dogs. I, you know, we love dogs, and I just see all these apes, and there's other, you know, there's um, cool cats and lazy lions. So Lazy lions? Yeah, lazy lions. That's actually a successful NFT. <laughs> I've never experience. heard of that. Anyways, um, I came across jyd junkyard dogs about a week after their mint so i missed the mint but then i was able to i, I got this bad boy on um, open sea and, and mint I, is when they're first released yes and they were i believe it was the same as crypto punks point oh eight point oh eighty. that's a pretty standard i feel like floor yeah. price when things are minted yeah. and now point oh eight is right around like the what three hundred dollar mark Maybe more than that now, but either way, it's, it's usually it's probably about dollars. the same. It's honestly not that much different because it did go up and then it's, it's come back down. So yeah, we we have a few of these, and she was talking about rarity. So, so you're viewing your junkyard problems. dogs on OpenSea right now. Yes. Okay. So okay, I don't know if you guys can necessarily see this, but right here it tells you the rarity based on this nft so this is cute it tells you the breed yes frenchie they're frenchies the but background. they look like boston so we just we'll know. Yeah. but it also says like eyewear wayfarers so like but look at the percent that's the only five percent have that trait only five percent are wearing the wayfarer so that tells you there's like a rarity factor right it tells you the different features how common they are yes so the most valuable 40 crypto punks they are the rarest one this is kind mm -hmm. of CryptoPunk kind of invented, or CryptoPunks kind of in, invented the rarity. property rarity, and the, there's tons of NFTs that follow suit. Is it copying? Is it just kind of they, you know, created something that's going to be around for a while? I mean, it's like saying, did Facebook create the like or whatever? You know, it's it's like creating a system. But also, you realize when you held on to junkyard dogs, they started giving you stuff for free, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so we just, there's a do-rag, 5% of them have them. That's, I thought he looked like Kit from Napoleon Dynamite, honestly. He does, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it is fun to invest in like little character ones like that because there's like a personality to them, you know? It's like your digital dog. It's yeah, <laughs> okay, so we have four, and what ended up happening was they, they probably had it since the beginning, the idea, but what they offer you is these things called scraps. So you get one scrap each week for every JYD you own that is not listed. You cannot have it listed for sale to get the scrap. So, but what you can do with the scraps is over time, you can get a rare version of a JYD that only like, I think there's only gonna be a hundred minted or something like that. You need to have tons of scraps, but. Um, so you can basically, just by holding, you are being given kind of this token to eventually uh, get a different NFT that just because you own it, you are going to get a way more valuable NFT just by owning these ones and that you could sell it's, potentially. And it's loyalty, you know, um, with some NFTs, like for example, Moments, Top Shot, what we started with, the utility there uh, is the challenges you can complete. So we won't go deep into the challenges because we only have so much time in this episode, but essentially, I know. Our just dogs just... a little JYD out of my side. You know? <laughs> this, is... Like, this is comfy. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna get right behind it. You know, honestly, myself. too, when he showed me the junkyard dogs, I was like, French bulldogs and Boston terriers are very trendy right now, and so I am confident that more people will buy these. Um, but what I was saying about challenges. So the utility with junkyard dogs is they give you these scraps eventually if you get enough scraps you can make something out of the scraps you can have a whole other junkyard dog that you get just for being loyal to that nft and not selling that nft with other nfts like the moments with top shot they do challenges so it's like if you have these five moments or moments from these five players you are eligible to enter a challenge Right, so there are different ways that different kinds of NFTs create utility and create almost this community or game or you know whatever you want to call it. But a lot of NFTs create loyalty and and give you incentives to hold on to them and not just buy and sell. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we went through, we've gone through board apes, we've gone through crypto punks, we've gone through junkyard dogs. I want to talk about ballers because. Followers, he's repping them and uh, you know if you've watched one of my streams before you probably have noticed this weird little green man popping up in the comments and talking uh, in the comments on the streams and that is now 
my loves PFP on everything. This green lizard dude. So this is his PFP verified. Um, and this is Baller. So that little dude, it kind of looks like a crypto punk, but ballers are very clearly, you know, basketball players and they have different skin tones. There's male ones, there's female ones. They have different rarity. We uh, think that, you know, because this guy is green, that it's kind of looking like Frankenstein. Maybe he'll be a little bit more rare if we hold on to him. Ballers, Top Shot, and another NFT we'll talk about in a second, Susables, are all on the Dapper, what's it called? The Dapper Universe, universe? I guess. Like Dapper, Dapper Labs is the company that um, puts out. Creates the, them. Yes, creates them. I got, got the licensing from NBA and yeah. NFL and La Liga, UFC. They're, so, they're powerhouse, an absolute powerhouse. Yes, yeah, so they're not only Ethereum blockchain. You can buy them with Ethereum. That's what he was talking about. You can buy ballers, you can buy um, top shot just with your US money through the flow system or flow blockchain. So um, they're releasing new NFTs or opening a marketplace right now for UFC, and it's likely creating issues with all of their other NFTs as well. Yeah, it's, it's I've never seen where you can't like lo log into um, log in basically just to see what your image is in my wallet. So hopefully it's still there when, uh, when I definitely do log in, or I will be going to Canada to talk to. Pepper Labs and be like, yeah, where is my green boy? I need it. Where's my green boy? Um, yeah, so. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not signed in, but these are, these are basically, you know, what they are. The floor price for these are 1100 right now. The highest the floor got to was about 1800 or so, which was not that long ago. And it's kind of taken a, a little dip. It's just because there's kind of been a lull, like in terms of utility, people are just like, Where's the utility? What do I, you know? And then if it's not there, then they gotta do something else. But yeah, so 1100 at the moment. Um, I own four. That's the price, 1100. 1100, yeah. Dollars. Yeah. Dollars. These ones are in dollars, not Ethereum, because they're not on the Ethereum blockchain. Flow. Flow. So you can see there's like, I, I don't know if you can see, but there's like female ones, there's male ones, there's black ones, there's brown ones, there's white ones, there's green ones. I think there's even some other colors. Some girl has purple hair in here. Yeah, zombies, aliens, you know. And they all, all have that different that stuff. features that make them more or less valuable. James is asking, how much did you pay for the PFP? He wants one. James, so now, get James a baller. So I <laughs> minted three of them. And okay. they, they were $200 in mint. And you don't know which one you're going to get. It was just random. It was an absolute shit show as I was going down. The website was barely working. I was able to magically somehow get three of them. And then actually what ended up happening, like through Top Shot, they gave a huge uh, rake back at the end of the year. And you can use, since this is a Dapper product, you could it gave you money into your Dapper account. And I was able to buy one more, which is on the Phoenix Skulls. I'm from AZ. I wanted one from AZ. And that one was... 1200 which is now it's probably gonna like, it's probably worth about two thousand. so through top shot he learned about dapper and then he his strategy was and still is i'm invested in dapper so i'm gonna also invest in other projects that dapper is coming up with because if those projects go up it's like you know a rising tide raises all ships so that's something to think about as well if well okay i talked about like developers and not knowing who they are like board it you didn't know who they were you i guess i don't know exactly who like you know like dapper's a huge company but they are very much like that is who's backing this this is mark cuban uh mark cuban invested as well he's not with dapper but he there's certain investors it once i heard mark cuban dapper behind this it's like okay i haven't heard of nft any nfts with that big of a, a following yeah so um speaking of let's talk about the reason that you started collecting Susables because they're also on the Dapper, I, I don't want to say blockchain, is that correct to say blockchain, the Dapper blockchain or the Dapper universe? Um, so they're a Dapper product. They're a Dapper product. So Susables are not something you would have probably just been into had they not been part of the Dapper universe. No, I just, Yes, it's probably through Twitter or Discord. I somehow came across that 
Dapper was doing Dr. Seuss NFTs and they were doing private beta. So what, what that means is private beta, you have to be invited to come use the product and in exchange for like testing out how things are going, you have access to the very first series one Seussables. So I had to, uh, jo I just, I put in my email um, on the Seussable, I don't even know how it happened, but then all of a sudden, like a month later, it's like, hey, you, you're in private beta. I was like, wow, this is great. Because I knew with Top Shot, the people, there was private beta as well. And some of the biggest whales who have like multi-million dollar accounts, they were in private beta for Top Shot. And a whale is somebody who holds a lot of a single kind of cryptocurrency or NFT. Just another little lingo for you. Um, so Seussables, as you can probably guess, are based on Dr. Seuss books. And when he told me about Seussables, I actually hold some Seussables, you guys. And I've been trying to get other people into them because this is what I think the future of NFTs will look like. This is just my speculation. Everybody knows, everybody in America, pretty much, and in most parts of the world, know who the Grinch is, right? He was like, I got a Grinch NFT or I got a Grinch Seussable. And I was like, I automatically know what that is. I don't know automatically what a baller is or what a crypto punk is, but I know what the Grinch is, what the Cindy Lou Who is. I know what the cat in the hat is. So this is lingo that we all already have through shared experience, through literature, through movies. And now the people who own the rights to Dr. Seuss have partnered with Dapper Labs and created NFTs. So he was in private beta. He's He's kind of like a Seussable whale. He owns a lot of Seussables. And the great thing about these is they are, you can just buy them with regular money. You don't have to go through OpenSea or the blockchain. It's just an app you download, like literally the Seussables app. And they're like $5 a pack. So right now they're very attainable. It's not like this huge investment to buy them. Granted, the marketplace hasn't opened for Seussables yet, so we don't know how much they will it's sell out, It's for. out of private beta now. It is. They have an app also. That's different. It's the only Dapper product that has an app. Everything else, Top Shot, NFL All Day, and UFC Strike, you have to use um, your browser. So it's, I think, the most accessible NFT right now, at least that I know of. And you heard it here first. If you're interested in getting involved in NFTs, now what's interesting, too, is with Almost all NFTs, I think, they do like drops, right? Is that a thing that they do always with every NFT or just with Seussables? Um, Most, right? Like pack drops. That's yeah, what so you have to, so that, right now, all the Seussables are sold out. You have to wait for them to drop a new pack and they'll drop like 5,000 new packs at once. So you download the app, you turn on your notifications, you find out when a new pack is dropping, you spend five bucks, you can buy a few packs at a time until they sell out and they usually do within 20 minutes. And then you own a Seussable. Yeah. Do it, we know how much these will be one day? No, we don't right now. But it's the, pretty there, cool. is, there isn't a market at the moment. The market the, on the Discord, like they've teased, they've shown pictures of it. We're, we're close to the market. And I, I'm excited about it. The, yeah, like she was talking about like Seussables. Like I'm not super into Seuss. I saw potential just based on NFT, you know, like Grinch, Cat in the Hat. That's what most people believe are kind of like the LeBron and Steph Curry equivalent would be Cat in the Hat and the Grinch. So I have some of those from the very first series. I have like three Grinch and I actually gave her, I gifted her one. He so. was like, this is really valuable. I hope you know, I know. how like, was, nice yeah, I'm being know. right oh, now. So how this works in terms of rarity, like you can see there are the base, which are like the most common ones. And then it goes up, there are four different rankings of them and then pins, would be the rarest of the rare. I believe these are out of a thousand. But Seussables, I believe, has yet to, I, I think they're going to do something kind of like the legendary and Top Shot. So these may not be the most valuable ones, but they are series one. So in terms of just, when it, with collectibles, series one is always what you want. Like, have you ever heard about like, comic books that are really yeah. like that? Like the yeah. very first Spider-Man comic book is like the most valuable one. Right, or like you can even think, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not into comics, but like people collect Barbies and like the very first Barbie is the most expensive one. So yeah, being first into an NFT project, it is like, like I said, the wild west, like getting in on the ground floor of something, it could be a total bust, but it's a gamble. You're putting in 200 bucks to invest maybe in most cases about, 
and you could potentially be the next Board Ape Yacht Club holder and have a, a million dollar NFT on your hands. Just and also it it depends on what goes with the cryptocurrency market in a lot of these cases. Not this though. Not and this. also, Susables, why I um, went in as well. So as soon as I found out that NFL or that Dapper got the rights for NFL, the top shot version of NFL, I knew I had to do whatever it takes to get in this private beta. Because I'm the I want the original, I want the bra I want the Brady, you know, first series. I want the Brady debut. I want the Mahomes debuts. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, so Susables, NFL all day, all Dapper related. So so what so what Dapper promised was basically if you bought a whole NBA Top Shot set, it's called Cool Cats, and it costs like five grand to complete or even more, that you would automatically get um, access to the NFL private beta. So my thought process is like, okay, I cannot do that, but I'm going to do the next best thing and just be very active on Dapper as much as I can because I've seen the way Dapper kind of operates and they reward like loyalty, what you were talking right. about. So I'm like, okay, if I like Top Shot, I definitely, you know, I never, a lot of people abandoned Top Shot and in certain points I've gotten lulls, but once I found out about NFL, I put more money into Top Shot and I've been very active on that. And then Susables as much as I could. And amazingly, I was able to get in NFL all day private beta, not in the first wave, which Cool Cats uh, got you the 5,000, but literally a week later I got in and didn't have to spend all that money. Because he so. basically showed Dapper Labs, like I'm loyal, I'm interacting with all your different kinds of NFTs, like if anybody is worth being in private beta for NFL, I should be considered, and it worked. And being in private beta gives you the chance to get on, on the ground floor of something, so you know, you can see why that would be valuable. Um, so, oh, yeah, maybe. What, what is this? These are my, this is what I got. This oh, this is, is NFL? This is, Yes, this is private. Okay. No one, you can't even see this. This, oh. is, this is private stuff. You got to be deep in the streets. We are an hour in, and I want to show people how they can actually get involved in these things. Um, one thing, we kind of gone through a different, all the different kinds of NFTs. Another thing I want to say, too, is someone asked, um, can an unknown artist like me ever be able to sell a song as an NFT? So there's a really big movement also among the artist community because if you are able to create an NFT from your art, you are like holding on to ownership of your art. It's like a lot of artists are excited about the idea of being able to use NFTs to gain value in their own art, to not have to go through brokers um, and music also. I think that we'll start to see that more and more like each song will have maybe an identity on the blockchain or something like that. I think blockchain technology, NFT technology, is going to start to seep its way into everyday life in more ways than we can understand right now. Like something else, a lot of um, people have seen this Gary V video where he talks about how receipts will eventually be NFTs. And like, if I sell you a service, the receipt I give you can be an NFT. And if all of a sudden I become famous, then that receipt will be worth something and gain value. And then we're both gaining value on the service that I provided. So like I said, it's very convoluted. It's very, um, it's the wild west. It's unknown, but who knows? And I'm an artist like you might be able to sell a song as an NFT someday. We will see. Maybe I have been saying like if Apple starts to use NFTs or if Disney starts to use NFTs in any way, it's game over. Like the whole Susables thing opened my eyes to the potential for Disney, like, or even Top Shot, you know, the Top Shot moment in a uh, sports game. Well, why can't I own a moment for my favorite Disney movie? Like I could own, we don't talk about Bruno. You know what I mean? Like, if Disney starts doing that, if you can own a moment for your favorite movie and only 100,000 people even can own We Don't Talk About Bruno, think about the potential for that. Yeah, let's, right? let's sell the house and get the Bruno. Sell the house, <laughs> right? Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of possibilities in the, the world. going on behind me too? Check that out. Yeah, like I said, we are all... <laughs> 
<laughs> you have sold me, Jenny says. See, I'm telling you, the Disney comparison, if Disney comes, and when he showed me suitables, the, the most valuable ones are like the pins, and they actually, the little pictures of them look like embossed pins. And if you've ever gone to Disneyland, you know about the collectible pins that Disney already has. There's already like a collector's market in the Disney world. So if that extends to the metaverse, extends to NFTs, I mean, I think in the next year or two, NFTs will be like household conversation, you know, in every house in America. Um, <laughs> and Willow thinks so too. So She's over. let's, I really briefly for people like Jenny who are now sold on NFTs, how do they get them? How do they buy them? Because I leave this to you. You are the NFT man of the house. We've, how, already, we've already kind of explained Do you it, just you know? go like, to OpenSeed? I still don't know how. Do you just go to OpenSeed.com? Is that a thing? Okay, OpenSeed.io? Here we go. Here, I'm going to bring this up and show you guys. What you need, the confusing thing is you need a MetaMask wallet, which is... For me, it took me a while to wrap my head around what I was even doing, but MetaMask is basically a wallet that kind of will become, you can connect it to your Google Chrome, and then when you go to these sites, it'll easily like connect your wallet. So like with Junkyard Dogs, I can verify I have JYD, and then they give me the scraps like through my MetaMask wallet. So you have to sign up for MetaMask, and then through MetaMask, you can buy Ethereum, but I tried to do that, and sometimes it can be this whole finicky, weird thing. I've had more um, success, like buying it through Coinbase and then moving it to my MetaMask wallet. Um, so that yeah, that's uh, that'd be the easiest way. And then you find what you want, and then there's also but the thing with Ethereum and OpenSea, you have to deal with gas fees. Yeah, talk about that. What's a gas fee? Because I still don't get that. Either. It's it's still a little you know confusing to me but as far as i can tell it's like to buy and sell things you know on the blockchain like someone actually to actually like be processing things and if there's a mint happening or there's tons of people doing it at the same time the gas fee like it's like this tax you have to pay that could be over a hundred dollars depending on what time of day it is usually it's like I don't know. It, it's pretty lame, honestly. That's what I love about Flow and like dapper. the Dapper because you don't have to like any and time of day. Dollars. Yeah, like if you know, sometimes like I I was gonna do something, I was gonna try to buy something, and it's like okay, well, gas fees are really high, so you wait till late at night or in the morning. And then also the thing about um, OpenSea is it costs money to list and delist. You mm. literally have to pay gas fees to list and delist. Not something you have to do. With Top Shot Dapper on Flow, that's why it's great, and you know it's gonna go to the moon. And <laughs> so that's why I keep coming back to like figure out what NFT you're interested in, you're passionate about, because each one has its own little kind of like system, its own form of utility, and uh, you know its own kind of like rules. You're being distracting. Its own rules that come with it. Um, so some other notes I wrote down because like this note page is full, and we've gone all over the place. I want to ask you, what could go wrong if you buy an NFT? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Like, okay, think of the world um, as we're going into 2020. It's like, this is going to be the greatest decade ever. It's just, and then, you know, a pandemic. And NFTs have only been exploding during still the ongoing pandemic, you know, to right. a certain extent. Right. So it's like, it really springboarded what's happening and, and you know you're reliant on the rest of the community where other people get scared like you think about crypto and stuff like that right it's like, everybody's selling their nfts then the value of your nft goes and, down and then, more people, and then more people start to sell exactly right like it's there's no sure things like all i heard all summer is that bitcoin's going to a hundred thousand and ethereum will be at ten thousand like people are just like there's no way this doesn't happen you know they're guaranteeing it and it didn't even get close to that like, right, so it's all speculation. It's all like gambling, but you can't get really rich if you if you hit the right. I know that sounds. It's just like well, I'm like don't get out of teaser, dude. You but brought it, up you brought up a good point though about COVID and how this whole climate of cryptocurrency of NFTs would not have happened probably if we weren't all at home in this pandemic. Even 
like Facebook turning into meta. The whole evolution of the metaverse, I really believe, has been, um, you know, fast-tracked because we all started Zooming each other. We all started meeting virtually because we had to, and many companies started to realize, oh, there's like a market here for people meeting online. Like that's the whole idea behind Meta with Facebook. You know, in that same interview I talked about with Mark Zuckerberg, he's like, people are meeting online. Like we're gonna create a space where people can meet and interact online from anywhere in the world. That's why they came out with Portal. That's why they came out with Quest. So I think it's an important thing to point out that like the whole point behind cryptocurrency behind, or maybe not the whole point, but a big motivation behind NFTs is creating digital communities for people to interact with each other and having this like shared asset that people can bond over. Like, oh, you see someone on Twitter who has a ballers profile picture. Are you going to follow them? Ballers follow ballers. It's, it's like, he has instant friends, you know, his 11th house is lighting up. My followers have gone up tremendously on Twitter. I bought, I bought for years to get him, and but then immediately it's, that is a cool part that, but now I follow a bunch of ballers that just annoy me and I'll, I'll just, I choose violence sometimes on Twitter because uh, they're saying, saying, I disagree with it. They're complaining about Top Shot and I'm just like, shut up, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Or woman. Um, or woman. Um, <laughs> But I, I think, you know, part of this whole conversation is about the metaverse and kind of where the world is going. NFTs are basically an asset you'll be able to use in the metaverse. And of course, this is going to evolve. And I'm sure once Facebook actually fully converts into meta, and there are like online meeting spaces that you can go into with your, you can go into different worlds with your Quest eyewear, you'll be able to buy some sort of like, skin like in Fortnite, you'll be able to buy an outfit to wear in the metaverse and that will be an nft you see where this is going you'll be able to buy people have bought houses in the metaverse technically that is on the blockchain like that house maybe it's not technically an nft but it's on the blockchain it's kind of built with that same technology in mind right so more and more people are going to start be like if you've never watched the movie ready player one that's your assignment. Go watch the movie Ready Player One because a lot of people in cryptocurrency and metaverse and NFTs refer to that movie because it's a really great example of the possibility of the it's, online it's where, space. it's where we're headed. That's what a lot of people think. Yeah. And it's already kind of here. Like gaming is yeah. Gaming's huge. Gaming is a, a really big uh part of nfts as well. Like we talked about with Fortnite and I'm sure with other video games. We don't play video games, Zen. but Zed, the horse racing. Oh, I did want to talk about that. This is crazy, you guys. So this is a horse uh, or a, an NFT on the Ethereum blockchain. And we were thinking about getting involved in it. I'm kind of glad we did it. But it was too expensive. I mean, I kind of missed the boat on it. But there's uh, there's horse racing with your NFT. So that was another utility your, as well. You, your NFT is a horse. Yeah, you buy the horse and then you can race it. And then there are basically it's kind of random who's good or not, but you can win money in the races. It costs money to enter into the race, but then you can, if you win, you win money. So then it's just passive. And you don't know passive. who's going to win the race. And it, there's like different breeds and you can breed your horses. So there's utility, yeah. not only in racing, but you can like, like, like passive, stud out passive your horse. income. By yeah. owning the horse, because once you breed, you know, then it's like you're technically making another horse slash D that you can race. And yeah, it's this whole, I haven't, like, I've heard a good amount about it and I kind of missed the boat on it. But yeah, it, it was cool. Like, and there's all kind of, like with JYD, there's been lots of things kind of promised with, uh, in the future, J JYD is junkyard dogs with like breed, potential breeding and then potential racing of the dogs as well in the metaverse, in the sandbox specifically, one of the reasons why I was also bullish on JYD and continue to be because they are, they own land, junkyard dogs in the sandbox which metaverse, is which one is a, metaverse. a type of metaverse. There are multiple, it's, it's kind of a race to see who wins, almost like a space race, but the metaverse race. And on that note, 
you know, I've been thinking a lot about this is called the spiritual journalist. So, you know, spiritually, like, why would you be, I don't our dogs are like living on the couch. I don't know. She's wants, she's wanting to get out of here for a long time. Why so. would you want to live in the metaverse so you don't have to deal with your dog living on the couch while you're trying to record a podcast episode? Um, but, you know, if you're, <laughs> our dogs, dogs are super fancy. Lives. Okay. So if you are someone who believes in the multiverse, different realms, different realities, right? Even if you watch Marvel and, and all the different realities that are playing out at the same time, that's a very spiritual concept, right? Who's to say that the sandbox metaverse isn't one of those realities, right? Like we are creating new realities that people can live in, that people can communicate in, that I can go hang out with someone who lives in India in the metaverse and we can be friends we can have a relationship like this is the information age this is <laughs> the age where our dogs are antsy this is the age where um you know we're able to communicate with anyone around the world and like the metaverse is just taking that to the next level where i can put on goggles and feel like i'm meeting you face to face so nfts are just kind of like an extension or an asset within these metaverses yeah yeah okay last thing i want to go through this is just a fun little thing we can end on some fun terms i know we've, we've told you guys about like pfps and lots of fun little terms that i made him explain but this way if you get into trading nfts or buying nfts you will know what people are talking about if they say these things so i'm going to ask you i'm going to tell you the term and you tell me what it means the first one is fat fingered. Go. Fat fingered is when you list an NFT far lower than what you intended. Say you were trying to list it for 1100, but you leave out a zero, so it's only $110. This has happened in horrific fashion in NFTs, where instead of it only, you know, instead of losing 900, like I just said, it's like think of it. It's supposed to be a million or and then you leave off a zero or you know or something like that it's mainly i've seen it around where people end up selling it around a thousand where it's supposed to be like a hundred thousand and stuff right. like that and it just happens like literally once every two weeks or so you'll see something that just and it, it sucks for kind of for everybody too because it makes it look like the floor for the nft is way down when something like that happens what's cool about people start buying and getting you know i just the, the great thing about TalkShot is they they listen to the community and there's actually a warning now that happens. It's like when you're listing one of your NFTs, if it's, it's, if it's lower than the lowest price, it'll tell you like, hey, you're about to list this for lower than way the floor. Way lower, yeah. Or not even just, it didn't say way lower, it just said you're lower. listing it lower than the floor, is this okay? And some people honestly get lazy and they're like, yeah, I know I am because sometimes it gets stuff sold if you're trying to sell it really fast, maybe you list it like, 10 15 20 right. under you're trying to unload. what the price is yeah. but then that also like when you're doing stuff like that you kind of screw over everybody else in the process so it's a whole totally and when you said that it made me think of um Casey watches a lot of content about nfts and it's like i said very invested very into researching them there's actually a new i don't know what it's called maybe you know the name of it but like one of the guys you watch just started a business where you can put up your nfts as collateral essentially for like a loan so it's not just like you'll be able to use these things only in the metaverse. Like yeah. there are real possibilities if you own a really valuable NFT, like you could still hold that NFT, but you know, there, there's a benefit if it gains value. Yeah. You, it's a yeah. way, it's a way of uh, not activating capital gains taxes. Also. Oh. So like, say you had one of those valuable LeBrons or something like that. And that's where, so what we saw, I believe was floaty. And there's another mm -hmm. company called fractional which there's also i've seen in sports cards as well it's like you can buy percentages of the nft like some mm, people go yeah. some people go in on nfts like there'll be like 10 people who own mm -hmm. a crypto punk because it's too expensive for them to own on their own so they'll each own 10 percent or a certain percentage and come together and form they form like an almost like an llc or something right to buy something really valuable or really expensive you, you can do that i yeah. think like tax wise i believe it would make more sense if you form the llc most things usually right um, okay fat fingered we got that what about rugged <laughs> 
Rugged uh, initially started off as a saying, basically, in terms of not knowing developers for an NFT. And they promise all these things like, oh, it's going to be great. We're going to have this roadmap that says, you know, like all these things. We're going to have in real life parties, blah, blah, blah. And then they mint. And then those people just go away because they just had you know, NFTs is there on their Twitter avatars and it's not their name. They're just like, so you don't even know who they are. And then these people just disappeared. So that's where the, the saying came from, Rugged. Now it's a lot more just thrown around. It's kind of this fun, almost like funny saying, like immediately if something doesn't go your way, you're just like Rugged. Okay, okay. What about doxed? Doxed, uh, that is when your actual identity is revealed. Because one thing about NFTs is it, if you have it as your PFP, no one knows who you are. And if your Twitter isn't, you know, like my Twitter is my name, so you can, you can find. But if my my, but I have a different persona for uh, your MetaMask wallet for all of your like yeah. And like in Top Shot, like I am what like I'm book twelve twenty four, and I just have my picture, so no one knows that's me. Like there is some I'm referred to as well, probably not by anybody because my account's not that big, but. But yes, you can have a whole different identity. It's very Scorpio. Yeah, very so, so, Scorpio so docs would be if you, you operate like that, like you have a PF, you know, you have a PFP NFT and it doesn't say your name and it would be someone who knows who knows who you are and then revealing who you are. Like so, outing you. Yeah, and there are certain situations like you were, depending on your job, you know, like getting docs is kind of a, a big deal. But what I was talking about, Board 8 is, the the identities of the creators were secret until like two weeks ago, but then they got doxed. They got doxed. Okay, um, two more. Undercutters or undercutting? Uh, we were just we were. I was just explaining that like it's there is a uh, floor price for mm -hmm. something. You know, say it's a a Booker Devin Booker Top Shot moment, and the floor price is a hundred bucks. So that's the cheapest one. So you have one, and say maybe you want to buy a pack the next day or something. So you're like. I need to get this sold. So then you mark it, you put it to 80. You're like, lower right, I'm going to lower because at 100, you can see when the last one was bought. So maybe it's been a couple of days. So it's like, okay, that was the, that was the price where people stopped, you know, 100 bucks. So, but what that creates is, I think the next one we're getting into. It's, is it FUD uh, or FUD? FUD. FUD. Yes. What FUD does that mean? Fear, uncertainty, doubt. What that would be is, okay. Top Shot had a huge crash after its initial, you know, kaboom, where everything took off. Um, what, so what ended up happening is fear, uncertainty, doubt. That's what FUD stands for. So people start to, you know, get scared. They're like, oh, wow. I, I spent all this money. And then, you know, there's an undercutter. And it's like this one I bought for 15K. It's now like 14K. And then someone's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm uncertain because someone went down. And now it's down to 13K. And then everybody's like, oh shit, this has gone down 2,000 bucks. So everyone starts to get scared. It's like, okay, well, oh my God, I got to sell now. And then you, it gets down to, you know, 11 and 1,000. And that's kind of just, you know, that I think that's just people and everything is kind of like that in terms of crypto and stuff like that. But Fear, uncertainty, doubt. I think that could definitely translate to the real world. All right. We've been going for over an hour and a half trying to explain NFTs to you. So... Is, is there anything else that you want people to know about NFTs and you think people should know before getting into them? <laughs> yeah, you should know a lot. Uh, I don't know, not anything specifically. I guess stop focusing on just the JPEG aspect of it and I'm just buying this because you're not. You're, you're entering into a community. It's much more than that. It's a flex. Like, look at there are so many celebrities that have these now, you know, like you brought up Heidi Klum, Odo Beckham, he's crypto punk holder. And then just with board apes, I see them all the time. There's tons of athletes, celebs, and as time goes on, just more and more. Yeah, for sure. And from, you know, my perspective, from like a spiritual standpoint, someone asked, is the crypto journalist something to come based on this episode? No, because um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think with digital assets, you know, if you're somebody who's really big into manifestation, I think digital assets, you know, you can like manifest them more easily. Like if you're somebody who believes that you, you attract the energy you put out, if you're putting out good energy around 
and NFT. Like this literally happened with cryptocurrency. We gifted cryptocurrency to somebody and instantly the amount of it or, or the value of it went up. So I don't know. I'm someone who believes in manifestation, whether it comes to physical money or digital assets. And I just feel like spirit, God, whoever can manipulate digital assets more easily than physical assets. So if you're somebody who's into manifestation, that's just something to think about. That's just a, a perspective. So yeah, hopefully that provided some more clarity. I know we tried to answer some of your questions. Um, and I know that it's, it's a wild world out there. The best advice I can give is just to get involved, start with something small. Seussables is a great place to start just because it's only five dollars pack and uh for me that seems like a safer investment but yeah just just if you're curious the best thing to do is try it out for yourself so we always end these shows with a card pool i'm just gonna pick from the universe has your back deck and these are just well a card just fell out so this is our card are you ready for it yep okay oh my capacity to tune into the energy of love gives me the words i need when i'm ready to speak up the compassion I need when it's time to forgive and the power I need when I am lost. Doesn't necessarily relate to NFTs, but it's a little inspirational message for you. And also a reminder that just like I was talking about, if you are going into an NFT project with good energy, good vibes, if you, if your intuition is calling you towards it, if you have a good feeling about it, like listen to that try not to get so caught up in like the hype or, um, you know, just, it can be really easy to get like swept up in a, in a movement, you know, is that good advice or no? Yeah. I'm just hungry. Okay. All right. Okay. Well then that's our sign. The dogs are antsy. This guy's antsy, but thank you all so much for joining us. I appreciate you coming here coming with an open mind, with a willingness to learn. I hope this was helpful. If it was, if you could go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We are trying to get to a thousand subscribers so we can monetize and keep bringing you free content every week. Uh, check out Ballers, check out Seussables, check out Top Shot if you're into sports. <laughs> Stop being a weirdo. And we will see it's you Aquarius right- season. It is Aquarius season. We'll see you right back here next week. I will see you right back here next week. It is undetermined if these guys will be allowed back on the show after today. But thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll see you right back here next week. Until then, stay curious. Thank you so much for joining our discussion today. If you enjoyed this episode of The Spiritual Journalist, you can find more on thespiritualjournalist.com or you can listen to our conversations wherever you enjoy podcasts. And if you want to learn more about astrology, join me live every weekday morning on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter for Transits Today, where we break down the energy of the day based on the movement of the planets and start our morning off in a high vibe. All of the information we share on The Spiritual Journalist is completely free to you. So if you'd like to support more content like this, the easiest way to do so is to subscribe to our YouTube page. Head over to The Spiritual Shop on our website and buy yourself a little something. Or if you're feeling extra generous, you can buy me a coffee to fuel future live streams. Just tap the link in the description or head to buymeacoffee.com and search The Spiritual Journalist. I'm so grateful you found us here and I can't wait for our next conversation.